Facing Waves is brought to you in part by Newfoundland and Labrador Tourism. With 29,000 kilometers of coastline, you'll find plenty of room to breathe. Located on the west coast of Newfoundland, Grossmoor National Park is not only one of the most breathtaking parks that you'll ever visit, but it's the second largest national park in Atlantic Canada and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. From a paddler's perspective, Grossmoor National Park is really cool. It offers a variety of paddling experiences, whether you're a beginner paddler, an experienced paddler. You have everything from Trout River Pond, which is fairly uh, sheltered water, although wind can pick up and create some problems. You have the Green Gardens area, which is a spectacular coastline, and you can very easily access some of the most rugged and beautiful coastline that you'll ever see. Now, the Bond Bay area is great. There's three really cool communities, Woody Point, North Point, and Rocky Harbor. And they're really cool little tourist and fishing towns, small towns, great character and great paddling all around the area. From a paddler's perspective, you really can't ask for much more than what Grossmoor National Park has to offer. Paddling in Grossmoor National Park is a really unique way to experience, to add to your experience here in Grossmoor National Park because there's so much to do on the land, such as hiking, but as well, um, the viewpoints from the water is absolutely beautiful. If you're a paddler, coming uh, to Grossmoor National Park, Bombay is, is your best bet uh, for paddling. If you're a beginner, uh, an intermediate, or an expert paddler, it has something to offer, whether you're looking for two hours of paddling, or whether you're looking for several days. Grossmoor National Park is basically cut in half by Bond Bay. And Bond Bay is this inlet with a bunch of different arms, and it hosts a variety of little communities. Even though they're only about a mile apart, to drive from one side to the other takes about an hour. So the other option is to take the water taxi across, which only takes a couple of minutes, or to sea kayak across, which of course is what, what we did. All of these little towns are really cool, and they don't feel like tourist traps. They feel like a window into the maritime lifestyle. So Norris Point and Rocky Harbor aren't exactly big cities, pretty small towns, but as I understand it, what we've got here is a smaller town, or what was a smaller town. Yes, actually, uh, just across the Tickle, Norse Point is in the background here. Uh, it's a pretty neat little place called Gads Harbor. As Norse Point grew and the modern conveniences, uh, hospitals, churches, schools, those things became quite attractive and people eventually moved out and were um, resettled. And the interesting story here is that people actually packed up uh, one day and took their homes and all. In the morning, uh, the, the people of the community would haul the houses down to the beach, uh, wait for high tide, the houses would float, the, uh, the boats would then tow the homes across the tickle, which is a short piece of water here, and uh, the kids would all go to bed in a new community that night. Did it look like a snail shell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine having a summer home? Yeah. Just a little cabin? Yeah, I would not be moving. If you're traveling with or without kayaks, that's not an issue. There are a couple places where you can rent uh, kayaks and equipment, and the communities are always accommodating. Uh, with the locals can usually offer you uh, some good information on weather, uh, put in and take out, and of course places to eat and uh, to stay. 